shout out to Jesus Morris. Um, bought this at Indigo Band Borer. You can see this. It's intended as a Father's Day gift to my brother. Now I'm going to read the copyright. Except in the United States of America, this book is sold subject to condition that it shall not, by way of trade or otherwise, be lent, resold, hired out, or otherwise circulated, without the publisher's prior consent, in any form of binding or cover, other than that it, in which it is published and without similar condition, including this condition being imposed on subsequent purchaser. So, I don't know the law, but my reading of that copyright says I can read from this book. Westfield shrugged his thin shoulders philosophically. He had sat down at the table and lighted a black, stinking Burma cheroot. Got to put up with it, I suppose, he said. B-S of natives are getting into the club nowadays. Even the Pigu Club, I'm told. Way this country's going, you know. We're going to the last club in Burma to hold out against them. We are, and what's more, we're damn well going to be holding out. I'll die in the ditch before I see a here. Ellis had produced a stump of pencil. With the curious air of spite that some man can put into the tiniest action, he repinned the notice board and pencil the tiny neat BF against McGregor's signature. There, that's what I think of his idea. I'll tell him so when he comes out. What do you say, Flory? Flory had not spoken all this time. Though by nature anything but a silent man, he seldom found some found much to say in the club conversations. He sat down at the table and was reading G. K. Chesterton's article in the London News, at the same time caressing Flo's head with his left hand. Ellis, however, was one of those people who constantly nag others to echo their own opinions. He repeated his question, and Flory looked up, their eyes met. Their skin round Ellis's nose suddenly turned so pale that it was almost gray. In him it was a sign of anger. Without any prelude, he burst into a stream of abuse that would have been startling if the others had not been used to hearing something like it every morning. My God, I should have thought in a case like this, when it's a ca case of keeping those black, stinking swine out of the place where we can enjoy ourselves, you'd have the decency to back me up. 
even if that pot-bellied, greasy little sod of a doctor is your best pal, I don't care. If you choose to pal up with the scum of the bazaar, if you please to go to Verswami's house and drink whiskey with all his pals, that's your lookout. <coughs> Do what you like outside the club, but by God it's a different matter when you talk of bringing in here. I suppose you'd like a little Verswami for a club member, eh? Chipping into our conversation and pawing everyone with his sweaty hands and breathing his filthy garlic breath in our faces. By God, he'd go out with my boot behind him if I ever saw his black snout inside the door. Greasy, pot-bellied, little, etc. This went on for several minutes. And there's more racism in the book, but I have to edit this video because I said a dirty word. When, when you bees, you get these, uh, floating worms in your eyes. They float and you can watch them spin. Spin in the air. Beezing is amazing. <laughs>